At the crossroads of law and order, Illinois is on the brink of a monumental change. Well, just over here in Wisconsin, a monumental task to stop an illegal drug. Welcome to Wisconsin, the sign proudly proclaims subheader, where your Illinois weed sure isn't. Where at the intersection of legal and illegal may soon cross a fine line. Do you think a lot of people who do use marijuana who live close to the border will go, will go back and forth and bring it into Wisconsin more? Oh, probably. I mean, that seems like a thing that will happen. Recreational marijuana use is just a vote away from Illinois' reality, where that state's governor has promised his signature. But it will still be illegal in the state of Wisconsin. Meaning not in your car, not in your trunk. And 12 Sports' Stephanie Sutton is in Toronto. She is actually interviewing Drake as we speak. Let's uh, listen to her now. We proud and passionate. We are like a college sports team. The Toronto Raptors are a college sports team, I promise you. I love Toronto. I love this team. And we're going to the end. Only on 12, Deer District drink blackouts. Thousands of fans packed the Pfizer Forum Plaza to celebrate the Bucks' win on Wednesday, but some fans believe something they drank made them black out. 12 News' Caroline Reinwald is live at the plaza tonight. And Caroline, they say it happened after one or two drinks? Yeah, and we're hearing that this happened to up to six people here Wednesday night outside Pfizer Forum, all of them ordering their drinks here from the absolute vodka tent and then quickly realizing something was terribly wrong. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know how I got home. Allie Diaz remembers being in a crowd of about 2,000 people Wednesday night in the Deer District, buying a pre-mixed Moscow mule with her friend around 6.30. Then another round two hours later when they started feeling strange. So I turned to my friend and I said, hey, um, I'm seeing double. And she looked at me and she was like, yeah. Me too. A couple minutes later, she's like, hey, like, I need to go to the bathroom. I really don't feel good. She goes to the bathroom, and that's the last thing I remember. Diaz made it home and doesn't think she was ever hurt, but she's certain her drinks were drugged. When she posted about the incident in a Milwaukee women's Facebook group, two more couples responded with the same experience. And other people were commenting and saying that I had a Moscow mule. I went to that same exact tent. We only had two drinks, and we were also completely blacked out. Didn't remember a single thing that happened for the remainder of the night. Everybody out of the water. That was the unfortunate message today at South Shore Beach in Milwaukee. The beach closed to swimmers because of high levels of E. coli bacteria in the water. 12 News obtained this surveillance video from the Family Dollar in Brown Deer July 1st when a cashier pulled a gun on a customer. Once I had stepped like from behind the counter, she pulled out her gun from behind in her from behind her back pocket. The customer didn't want to be identified, but told 12 News previously the fight started when she tried to exchange a bag of charcoal. She just was really rude, cussing us out, calling us like and provoking us to try to come behind the counter to fight her. 12 News just obtained the police report in which the cashier told police a different story. She says it was the customer who was being hostile and threatening. You see her pull the gun after the customer goes behind the counter. The clerk has a concealed carry permit, and she told police that she always carries the gun on her at work, especially when she closes for the night. 12 News with surveillance of a suspected road rage shooting that left a five-year-old hit by a bullet. Tonight, the search for the suspect. A vape warning from doctors following eight teenagers being hospitalized. This is different. This is acute um, and, and requir requires a lot of intensive treatment. The warning to parents. And Packers training camp opens. Will you see Aaron Rodgers in roles off the field and on TV? I'd like to be on Shark Week again. And we begin with breaking news tonight. A five-year-old shot in another case of apparent road rage only on 12. Surveillance of the shooting. It is disturbing but important since the suspect is still on the run. The shooting happened at 44th and Keefe on Milwaukee's north side. That's where 12 News' Caroline Reinwald joins us live. Caroline, how is the girl doing tonight? 
The girl is recovering. She was shot in the leg. We do know those two vehicles were driving across the street here at Keith, crossing onto 44th, and that is where that little girl was shot earlier today. I want you to take a look at this exclusive video we have showing the entire ordeal unfold. Now, in that video, you can see both vehicles turning onto 44th. The green van rips around the silver sedan. Both cars stop. The drivers are yelling at each other. And then the man in the green van gets out with a gun in his left hand by his side, yelling at that other driver. And that driver pulls away. But the other man with the gun fires four shots in his direction, one of them striking the driver's five-year-old daughter sitting in the back seat. We do have information that we're following up on now uh, that we hope will lead us to the suspect so that we can uh, do what we need to do to close this case and possibly make an example of this person so that this kind of stupidity stops. It's killing me. It's hurting my heart, you know, for a little innocent baby to get shot again. And we are sick and tired of hearing this. And Toya Patrick, the person who shared that surveillance video with us, did not wish to speak on camera today. Police have seen that surveillance video. They're hoping it helps them find that shooter. All right, Caroline, thank you. And today's shooting happened just blocks from where a three-year-old died in a suspected road rage shooting earlier this month. The suspect in that shooting, Antonio Bratcher, pleaded not guilty in court this morning to killing Brooklyn. Breaking news, Children's Hospital of Wisconsin just announced eight patients are being treated for seriously damaged lungs. 12 News' Nick Bohr is live at Children's Hospital tonight. Nick, all eight teenagers admitted to vaping in the last month. Right, Toya, the doctors here can't be certain, but they strongly suspect that the eight hospitalizations here at Children's Hospital over the last month are related to the teen's use of e-cigarettes. Some of them wound up in intensive care. Any parent of a teenager can tell you how pervasive e-cigarettes have become, and with candy-like flavors, criticism that the manufacturers target young people has grown along with the use. We've had eight teenagers who've been hospitalized at Children's with severe lung damage in a short period of time, and all have had the common thread of vaping. As Children's Hospital sounds the alarm, CDC statistics show the number of middle and high school students using e-cigarettes rose in the past year from 2.1 million in 2017 to 3.6 million last year, a jump of 1.5 million students. They all have had uh, fairly severe lung damage. The hospital says the teen's symptoms included shortness of breath, fatigue, chest pain, cough, and weight loss. Some were so bad they needed assistance to even breathe. They are able to, to go home um, off oxygen, um, but we don't know um, how long they will have issues. Nick joining us live once again. And Nick, the hospital told you they've had eight cases this month, but they just keep coming. All right, Toya, that eighth case just admitted this week. That patient still hospitalized here. And again, the big concern is doctors just don't know what the long-term effects of this will be. All right, Nick Bohr reporting live. Thank you. Whitefish Bay Police just sent out an alert. They're looking for a registered sex offender accused of approaching kids in Clody Park. Here's a photo of the man, Raymond Holzer. Police say he approached two children in the park yesterday and tried to show them images of Disney characters on his phone. Today, police say an officer, unaware of the initial incident, spotted him hanging out in the men's restroom and then again watching people on the beach from the bushes. The officer let the man go after checking open warrants and seeing he had none. However, However, Whitefish Bay Police say they've since learned he's a registered sex offender and are looking to arrest him. If you see him, you're asked to call 911. Well, the pack is back. Training camp officially got underway in Green Bay. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers threw some passes in front of fans, as you see here. As 12 Sports Stephen Watson reports, Rodgers has also found a career in television. We know Aaron Rodgers loves to live his best life in the offseason, golf, travel. Last year was a cameo in Game of Thrones, so could we see Rodgers again on the big screen? No, but I'd like to be on Shark Week again. I'd like to be on Jeopardy again. Those two for sure.
the voice of Lizzo, who claimed a Summerfest security guard attacked and roughed up members of her team. She tweeted about it after her concert last night at the Harley Davidson Roadhouse. One of the accusers shared what he says happened on his Instagram. This is how you treat the people that are coming to your event. Like, like she's performing. I work her. I'm her stylist. Like, I'm here. Like, I'm out here getting footage for her Instagram. Like, look at my badge. And he was like, no, little f we're going to take you down. Summerfest officials released a statement saying Lizzo gave an incredible performance, which she now feels is tarnished by events which occurred during the performance. We do not tolerate racism in any form. We will conduct a thorough investigation and promise to take action if necessary. Today is the third day of Summerfest, and here's a live look from above the festival grounds. Jason Aldean is headlining the main amphitheater. And the 12 News team is there live for tonight's Summerfest Spotlight Special, Patrick and Toya. It is a fun show everyone should watch. For sure it's a show. <laughs> you should be watching us at 5, 6, 10, 11 in the morning. You should be watching us 24 hours a day, not just because it's Summerfest, but that's what makes it special is because today is the first Friday of Summerfest of this year. And it is beautiful out Gorgeous. here right now. Yeah, with a lot of people, the grounds are filling up right now. A lot of people out here right now as we uh, as we watch the crowds pass by. As you mentioned, Summerfest Spotlight, mm -hmm. that's why we're down here. We have so many great stories and some surprises as well coming up at 6.30 tonight. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, we're not down here alone no. because for this special, this is the heavy lifting. This team is here. such a big deal that Sheldon Dutez and Eden Sheckle <laughs> from our morning show decided to stay up late. They're well caffeinated. We bumped into Sheldon earlier uh, this afternoon. They are at the Harley Davidson Roadhouse right now. They are part of Summerfest Spotlight. They have some special stuff coming up on the way. How you guys doing? We're doing good. We're rocking out with uh, DJ Doc Brown right now, and so is the rest of the crowd right now. They've been here waiting for T Pain. They are excited for T-Pain. He's taking the stage at 9.45 tonight, Eden. Everyone's looking forward to this. Yes, again, that show's at 9.45. I talked to some people in the front row here. They say they've been here since 3 o'clock. And look, they are still hyped, still energetic. Yes. And in the meantime, Doc B is uh, keeping them entertained. He and sure we have a chance to talk to him backstage. So we'll be talking to him Yes, more. so we'll have a live interview with Doc B coming up in the Summerfest Spotlight Special. We're looking forward to that. In the meantime, guys, we're going to keep dancing here on stage, making <laughs> fools of ourselves. Back to you. That's right. It, it's, it's, it's wonderful that Summerfest reminds me how young I am because it's, you know, fun to be out here and I feel real vibrant. And then someone says, oh, they've been out here since 3 and they're going to watch a show at 9.45. And you're like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> those, day, those days are gone for some of us. Right. But not for all of us because we right? have a special, super special guest that's joining us. Uh, out of retirement. Yeah, out of retirement. Mike Anderson is here on the grounds as well. Well, actually, we understand Mike is on a boat. How you doing, Mike? Well, I'm doing well, you guys. Thank you very much. I'm in the northeast corner of Summerfest here in the captain's seat aboard the Sea Ray, the great luxury boat operated by uh, Mercury Marina out of uh, Mercury Marine out of Fond du Lac. And at 6.30 during our Summerfest Spotlight, I'm going to be cruising around in this bad boy. And I'm going to tell you how you can have the same cruise for free. You come down here Summerfest while Summerfest is going around. You can have a nice little boat ride out here absolutely free. And also, during that Summerfest Spotlight, I want to introduce you to a local band band that was born and raised right here in Milwaukee. They're colorful, and I can tell you a little bit of hint, they're golden. That's coming up tonight at 6.30. So tune in, check us out. We'll cruise around together and have a little fun. I, I don't think I don't think he had to talk him into coming out oh, of retirement no, no, for this no, assignment. No. <laughs> we love it because we love seeing Mike. All right. And for now, we're going to toss it back to Joyce and Derek, who are in the studio tonight. Thank you so much. So fitting that Mike is in that boat. He just looks so that's where that's a retired Mike's reporter boat. ought to be. All right. Thank you. We'll see you at 630. Be sure to watch our special again, 630 tonight. And in doing so, you get a chance to win tickets to see Lionel Richie. And it's going to be a sticky Summerfest night. Chief Meteorologist Mark Baden is in tonight. And Mark, Fortunately, no more rain. No more rain. We're going to be dry for this evening. And just for the record, I, we've had a lot of great people that worked at Channel 12 over many, many, many years. There has never been a cooler person that's worked at this station than Mike Anderson. Let's get a live look out at the crowds as they continue to build. It is going to be a great night out there, and it's awesome. We had all that rain this morning, and people were really nervous. I got lots of questions on social media. Is it going to wash out Summerfest? The answer is clearly no. We are looking good. Temperatures in the 70s. Yes, you can feel the humidity out there. That's just the beginning. How warm we're going to get this weekend coming up in Weather Watch 12.
All right, thanks very much. Well, it has been rumored for months, Giannis Antetokounmpo's new shoe. It goes on sale tomorrow, but we've got an early peak coming up. The special message it'll have on the bottom. Plus, the Milwaukee Brewers show. Now, on WISN 12 News. Breaking news, two five-year-olds shot and killed in separate incidents in less than 24 hours. 12 News is live from the latest tragedy in Milwaukee. Yeah, I've seen somebody was shot in the bar. We're getting rescue going. Suspect was wearing a bandana around his face. More breaking news. Police say a masked robber shot and killed a Racine police officer as he tried to stop a robbery inside a bar. He ended up jumping over the bar to uh, do his best to take the suspect out. The manhunt underway for the shooter. And another officer killed. This one, a Milwaukee police officer killed in a crash on his way home. What police are saying about the driver. We begin with breaking news. A five-year-old Milwaukee boy shot and killed. It happened shortly before noon at 45th and Concordia in the Sherman Park neighborhood. 12 News' Derek Rose is there live on the scene. Derek? Yeah, Joyce, uh, relatives are still gathered at that home where this latest tragedy happened for the second time in as many days, as you guys mentioned. A five-year-old boy lost to gun violence. The difference in this case, according to a re retired police officer who worked with the family, is that the little boy in this case got a hold of a gun and accidentally shot himself. This call came in around noon today near 45th and Concordia. And according to that retired officer who was working alongside the Salvation Army chaplains, he told me the boy's mom was asleep in the home and heard a pop that woke her up. She called out for her son, and when he did not answer, she found him on the couch. Sadly, police say that little boy did not survive his injuries. Now, while police investigated the scene, the chaplains gathered here to pray with those relatives and the family. And after police cleared the scene, that retired officer we spoke to had this stern message for all of Milwaukee. Every gun owner that has a child in their house, please, I'm saying please, please, lock those guns up. Put them in a, put a, go and get you a lock, a uh, lock it a lock, or put it in some place where it's locked up, where these children cannot get hold of these guns. Is that what happened today? That's what happened today. Well, so heartbreaking, Derek. Do we know whether that gun was legally owned? Joyce, that's an open question for Milwaukee police investigators right now. That investigation is still very much underway. What we can say at this point, at least according to that retired officer we spoke to, the mother in this case said she did not know that gun was in the home. Derek Rose reporting from the Sherman Park neighborhood. And this is the second five-year-old child shot and killed in southeastern Wisconsin in less than 24 hours. A Kenosha boy died yesterday. His grandfather told 12 News his son accidentally fired the gun striking the boy. The grandfather said his son and another adult son dropped the child off at a nearby hospital and fled. They eventually turned themselves in. Maybe they were scared to death. Maybe they took him to the hospital because they realized they... Up. And uh, they didn't want the boy to, to be in pain or suffering. I, did, I, I, didn't ra I don't raise killers. Police did not arrest the two men. Now to a bomb scar at Walmart. Matt Salemi just flew over the scene in Franklin at 27th and College. Frank, the police have evacuated the Walmart at 6701 South 27th Street due to a bomb threat. The employees are all outside in the parking lot. They've got the parking lot completely blocked off. Officers blocking the front entranceways. Now, coincidentally, the Sam's Club that's connected to the Walmart appears to be open. We saw shoppers going in and out of that. But the Walmart on South 27th Street in Franklin has been evacuated for a bomb threat. Until the bomb squad can, until the bomb squad can clear the building, it will remain closed. Above the scene in News Chopper 12, Matt Salemi, WISN 12 News. The other breaking news story we're following, two local police officers killed just hours apart. This is Milwaukee police officer Ku Her. He died in a car crash on his way home from work overnight. We begin with the other officer killed, John Hetland of Racine. Hetland was shot while trying to stop an armed robbery inside a Racine bar. Police released this surveillance photo of the suspect, the masked man they say is responsible for killing Officer Hetland. 12 News' Nick Bohr is live at the bar at 20th and Lathrop. And Nick, that gunman is still on the loose. 
Right, Patrick. Needless to say, there's a lot of concern and worry about that here tonight. That gunman running out of the back door here of Teaser's Bar. That shooting around 940 last night. Investigators really have spent much of the day focused around here in this area, focusing on trying to find some clues and keeping neighbors safe and hoping to track down that suspect. Police and deputies flooded into this area about 945 last night after an attempted armed robbery turned deadly for the off-duty Racine police officer who tried to stop it. 24-year veteran John Hetland was at Teaser's Bar after his shift when a man armed with a gun came in and started to rob the bartender, demanding the cash in the register. According to the Kenosha County Sheriff, who is leading the investigation, Hetland sprang into action, leaping over the bar to stop the robbery, but was shot in the process. He later died. The gunman ran off. And the suspect took the gun and, and shot uh, Officer Hetland, uh, I believe, one time. And it was one time was enough. Did it appear he still had the weapon when he fled? As far as I know, we have not located the weapon, so I'm going to guess that he didn't, at least at this point, it hasn't been found. Nick, as investigators look for answers, we understand there is a reward in this case. Right, Patrick, a local business and the FBI have combined the resources to offer a $25,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of that suspect. Again, I talked to the FBI this afternoon. They say he should be considered armed and dangerous. Anyone who knows who that is is asked, of course, to call the FBI or local police. Patrick. Nick Bohr reporting live from Racine tonight. And here's that surveillance photo of the man police say they're looking for. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. And and those who knew the 50-year-old officer, and even those who didn't, made their way to the scene today to pay their respects. A 12 News camera captured officers comforting a woman outside the bar last night, shortly after the shooting. As 12 News' Hannah Hilliard reports, the officer's death has hit the city of Racine hard. My heart is sad. My heart aches for our community. A wide range of emotion hit the city of Racine Tuesday. Shock, anger. Why would anybody even think of doing something like that to somebody? Um, I, I just can't imagine wanting to pull a trigger on somebody. It's that emotion that compelled those like Mario Passarelli and others to come stop by Teaser's Tavern, the scene of the crime. Overnight, they saw law enforcement vehicles surround the restaurant. Considering that it's an officer, they're probably trying to protect his image um, and the family, um, which in our opinion is kind of different from um, citizens and things that have just occurred recently. We've suffered some devastating losses, you know, the 18-year-old last week, now this. And I'm just sad for racing. And those who came in the morning watched as Officer John Hetland's procession took off from the scene. I knew Officer Hetland. I umpired his games when he played baseball at Park High School, and he came in the store frequently, and it's just such a shock. What's he like? Very friendly, outgoing young man, very personable and yeah, very dedicated to his job. He wanted That's what he wanted to do, was to be a police officer. And even though investigators had control of the scene for most of the day on Tuesday, people still found a way to get flowers to the front door of the restaurant. Many hailing Hetland a hero for taking action. I think he potentially took a bullet to save someone else's life had he not been there. You know, he, we don't know who else could have been shot. Um, he sacrificed his life for someone else. And that's a sacrifice that not many people are willing to make. In Racine, Hannah Hillier, WISN 12 News. And friends say Officer Hetland was a father of two and well known in the community. Officer Hetland's body was taken to the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy. And this is what the procession looked like as it traveled from Racine north up I-94 to Milwaukee. And Officer Hetland's body returned to Racine from the medical examiner's office within the last 90 minutes. News Chopper 12 was there as the hearse arrived at Dragger Langendorf Funeral Home on County Line Road. Officer Herr had just completed his tour of duty uh, and like all of us wanted to drive home safely. 12 News obtained surveillance video showing the moments before police say a driver hit and killed an off-duty Milwaukee police officer. It happened overnight at the intersection of 60th and Capitol on Milwaukee's west side. That's where 12 News investigative reporter Hillary Mintz is live. Hillary? 
Yeah, Patrick, MPD is hurting, and that officer's family, they were just out here, and they talked to us. You're going to hear more from them coming up in our newscast, but they tell us just how difficult of a day this has been. That officer lost his life right here in the intersection of 60th and Capitol. Just after 1.30 a.m., Milwaukee police officer Ku Her finished his shift and headed home. Surveillance video obtained by 12 News shows her on 60th Street, but as he crossed Capitol, police say a 34-year-old man previously convicted of four OWIs smashed into the off-duty officer. Per witness statements, the suspect was traveling at a high rate of speed and crossed the intersection through a red light when he struck officer her. Chief Morales says those witnesses also helped police catch the repeat drunk driver. The witnesses who we want to thank not only stayed at the scene, but helped the police in apprehending the suspect by giving us the direction of travel. Her had only been with Milwaukee police for two years, but his lieutenant says he made a big impact. He was uh, well liked and well respected by all his peers. Uh, he will truly be missed here. Definitely. Uh, Definitely uh, impactful, significant loss for us, and we're we're hurting right now. And her's death comes after fellow District 4 officer Charles Irvine Jr. died last year. As a department, how do you guys move forward now after this second loss? In law enforcement, inherently, those bonds already run deep. But with these tragedies, those bonds have been getting deeper and stronger and stronger. So we've been bonding, getting through this by sticking together. Once again, Hillary, the suspect is in custody, but you've discovered he should not have been driving. Right, well, Patrick, he was on probation for his fourth OWI back in 2017. Now, we're not naming him because he hasn't been charged yet, but we have the name, and we've been looking into his past tonight. At 6, you will learn much more about his lengthy driving record. Patrick. Again, coming up tonight at 6, Hillary Mintz reporting live from 60th and Capitol. Late this afternoon, News Chopper 12 flew over this scene at the same intersection where Officer Herr died. A multi-car crash. The video shows at least three vehicles on the median at 60th and Capitol. You can see all three have front end damage. There's no word what caused the crash or if there were any injuries. Officer Hearst's funeral will be held the weekend of June 29th. A vigil will be held at the crash scene at 60th and Capitol on Monday. Officers Hetland and Her are the fourth and fifth police officers in southeastern Wisconsin killed in just over a year. Officer Matthew Rittner died this past February. He was shot while serving a search warrant on the city's south side. Officer Michael Mahalski died last July 25th while trying to serve a warrant at a home near 28th and Wright. Prosecutors say the suspect jumped out of a pile of clothes and shot him in the back of the head. And Officer Charles Irvine Jr. died when his squad car crashed while chasing a reckless driver near 76th and Silver Spring last June. Other law enforcement agencies posted condolences on Twitter. They were directed at both the Milwaukee and Racine Police Departments. Here are some of those tweets on your screen from agencies such as the Waukesha County Sheriff, Greenfield Police, Wauwatosa Police, and the FBI. Our coverage of the deaths of both officers continues on WISN.com. You can watch the full police news conferences plus video of the processions. You can also see them on the 12 News app. And still more breaking news to share with you. News Chopper 12 over a chase, crash, and then a manhunt in Pleasant Prairie. Police say they chased a car after a failed traffic stop, and it crashed into two other vehicles before flying into a ditch near 39th Avenue and 117th Street. The driver was able to get out and took off on foot. He got away. They say drugs and a handgun were found in his car. Police say only one other person suffered minor injuries in that crash.